a rivalry game like today and try to take that to their team, to their opponent at Boston University here today. Take a look at the starting lineups today. First for the Terriers of Boston University, who are four and two so far this season. And, you know, you look across this BU team, they were picked second in the Patriot League, coming off a 2-0 win over Lehigh. Some really strong performances here overall early in the season. Quinn Matulis certainly stands out, the grad student with two goals already this year, was the Patriot League Offensive Player of the Week back on the 28th. Get to the Boston College starting lineup here as we go through. But here's a wonderful chance right on cue. Great start, a bouncing ball, and it's kept out. Andrew Rent, the senior, comes all the way back off the counter. Has a wonderful chance that's stopped by Leon Musial. Musial, who's starting today due to the injury to Brennan Klein, who had to be removed late in that pit game after being banged up. Eagles are hoping Klein will be back sooner rather than later, but gets tested very early. That's a great job, just being aggressive, coming out to be present in front of that net to make that, that angle a little more difficult there for the Terriers. They will get a corner here, and they've been so good on the corners so far this year. Had a couple of set pieces that allowed to some goals against Lehigh in their last matchup. That was Rent the senior from Gorham, Maine, with the opportunity. BU goes wide. Dos Santos knocks it down. And it will set up a second corner kick in a row here for the Terriers. So good start here by Boston University. Well defended that time, and it's forced all the way out to Ryan Lau, the sophomore. That's what Boston College is going to have to do, make passes difficult, block those shots, make those lanes, clog them up so that the Terriers have difficult times finding those open opponents. You almost kind of absorb that sequence and then try to reset a little bit here in the early going of the game. But yeah, it seems like BU is really controlling the opening tip. And that's what you want to do first game on the road, especially in a rivalry game. You know the crowd's going to file in here on a Tuesday night. So you want to try to get momentum early on. Ball is out on the near side for a throw from Jonathan Murphy, the junior. Two of Boston College's three goals so far this year belong to Murphy, scored in each of the first two games of the season. There is Ted Cargill retreating back for Moritz Gundelach, who's played every minute so far this year. Very solid freshman in the back. Eagles, for the most part, have been defending in a back three so far this year. Over top, Dos Santos on side, and boy, Francesco Montali just got a piece of that, and BC will return the favor with the quarter kick. Well, Montali got caught flat-footed, so he had to dive from basically his heels to the right side to get a fist on that one and poke it out. That's good goalkeeping there. That's experience to realize, hey, I'm beat here, but I still got to make a play on this ball and get it out of the zone. Nice flick by the freshman, Dos Santos. And it sets up the corner kick. Aiden Farwell is making his second start in a row. Back to full health this year after missing last season due to injury. Dos Santos back for Xavi O'Neal to his left foot. So good at those crosses. Defended momentarily there by the Terriers. Dos Santos pass was too far for Farwell and it's back in on Montali. Patriot League's goalkeeper of the year last year. Had a wonderful season, an 839 save percentage, eight clean sheets for the Terriers, who finished 6 5 and 7 a year ago. Second in the Patriot League. You know, the best defense in the conference last season. Yeah, first Patriot League goalkeeper of the year for the Terriers since 2015. Cleaned up the awards last year. CJ Williams just got enough of a piece of it. O'Neill forces it forward through Burkhart. But the Terriers are there to answer. Ryan Lee's pass got knocked down by Diego Ochoa, the Eagles captain. Matulis goes wide. And BU on possession here. Each team with a shot so far. Each keeper's had to make a big stop in the early going. It's taken away by the Eagles. And Xavi O'Neill has got so much speed on the outside. Tried to force it forward to Aiden Farwell. But this will go back the other way as Javi was out of bounds on the far side. Well, if you're Kevin Nyland, you've you got to be happy with the pace and, and what the Terriers have been able to do in speeding up Boston College. They're not 
sitting back and waiting for opportunities to go. They're really pushing it to this defense and creating opportunities. Show you the Boston College lineup today. Again, back three with Ochoa, Williams, and Gundelak. And a bunch of pieces in the midfield. Burkhart and Cargill back. Hughes and O'Neill up on the wings. And Aiden Farwell gets the start up front for Boston College. Is kind of morphing into that striker position. Back healthy, as we said, after missing the last, really, year, almost year and a half when the injury occurred an all-ACC freshman team selection from two years ago. Rob Thompson said when he's healthy, he can be very talented and potentially signed at the end of the year if he can stay on the pitch. And when he is out there, he's made a difference for the Eagles. Pass part, was affected, so it didn't get all the way through. It's part of that goal against Merrimack early on in this season, first goal of the year for the Eagles that set up Jonathan Murphy. And if they can combine Murphy and Farwell up top, that's a dangerous combination for the Eagles. Griffin Roach will force it back to the keeper, Montali. Relatively quick turnaround. Take the Boston College side of it after a really intense physical game against Pitt on Friday. Even quicker turnaround for BU. They played Saturday in a 2-0 win over Lehigh in the first Patriot League game of the season. Colin Innes. Forces it all the way down the pitch, and Leon Musial comes all the way out and will just knock it into the bleachers for a BU throw. And Musial didn't have a great start against Quinnipiac, came in in those last 10 minutes against Pitt. Today, I'm really happy with his decision making, coming out aggressively, trying to play that ball and make it difficult for Boston University. Musial, who started his career at UNC Asheville, Started all but one game over his two seasons, including being named to the 2021 Big South All-Freshman team before coming into BU last year. That was that 2021 team during the spring season when he began his career in Asheville, the native of Germany. Yeah, you talk about the spot he had to come in. Less than 10 minutes to go in a really intense moment of what was a nil-nil game against a Pitt team that don't even just go by the number 17 ranking. It was a Pitt team that had fallen out and then turned around and beat number nine Wake three nil. So I think a team that's gonna end up much higher than 17th as the year goes on. Yeah, the ACC has been a gauntlet so far this year. What's impressive about that Pitt game was nine of the 13 total field players that made appearances for Boston College were underclassmen. So we're talking about the youth of this team. It just goes to show you they have a lot of freshmen and sophomores playing, and even sophomores and juniors who probably didn't see a lot of game action in their time. Ochoa off the throw in for Chavi O'Neal. Up the left wing, always looking to deliver the cross, and this time will earn the corner kick for Boston College. So after BU got too early, Eagles have responded pretty quickly. Beg your pardon, it's actually a throw here for Javi. And gets it back from Farwell. Pass was a touch behind. Eagles putting a lot of high pressure on this BU team. Ryan Lau on the near side. Della Mater forced it forward. Gundelak came up, and that's one of those things about this system that Bob Thompson is playing and implementing. You can try to establish that trust with some of those players if someone like Gundelak wants to step up into the play like that, and then Murphy comes in and takes his spot in behind. That cross is too high, and will come all the way to the near side. Yeah, just great communication there for Murphy and, and Gundelak. When you know one of your teammates is going up, you gotta fill that void. And Murphy did a great job going right into that position on that back three and making sure that it wasn't exposed there for the Terriers, especially with the outlet passes. You see BU trying to break down this defense with some outlet passes at midfield. Della Mater over for Ryan Lee.
Now you see Boston College moving in sync here, forcing BU back defensively. All the units moving together, and that one, that's what you want if you're Bob Thompson. You want to make sure that you force the offense to reset. Don't give them anything easy. Burkhart steps up, and here's Alfie Hughes. Off the setup from O'Neal. Boy, that's a really good job taking him off momentarily by Diego Rived. BC still on it, though. Cross looking for Farwell was a bit too high. Coming off of Dos Santos' foot. And a goal kick coming up for the Terriers. Yeah, it's twice now, Eric, that Rived has come back. The first time was against Xavi O'Neal on the far wing, and that time through the middle, doing a good job not fouling the player, but making sure you touch all ball and clear, clear with the tackle. Del Francesco Montali will take his time. The senior from Davie, Florida, who started his career at FIU for a couple of years before coming for BU. This is third season as a Terrier. Eagles will always be content to work through their back line. Try to hold as much possession as possible, though it's much more about the control in the field than it is the literal nature of the possession time. Having their center backs make their choices, allowing their tens to go out to the wings rather than stay stationary. And PC had a good chance on the near side with Murphy just creeping in, trying to get that pass. You can see it there on that possession. It's, you know, Murphy's moving all the way down towards the midfield and midfield line, but then it's quickly back in position at the forward position to play defense there on that outlet pass. So when you're Bob Thompson, you want everybody moving in sync. You want the style of play to be synchronized. That's kind of what you're looking for. Over top for Murphy. Plays it forward, looking for Dos Santos. That was well defended by Quinn Delamater, the sophomore from Marietta, Georgia. Murphy now couldn't quite get around Colin Innes, grad student from Kansas, after coming in as a transfer from Kentucky. Good passing here by BU all the way through, but Ochoa comes over. Just one pass away there for the Terriers. They broke down the defense, just the last pass didn't get through in the midfield. Looked like Bonington was the one waiting for it. That's If you're Boston University, that's the type of passing that's going to break down this defense. It's, it's a stingy defense for Boston College, but if you can get those passes to be a little crisper as the game goes on, have some more looks on net. It's out ahead of Javi O'Neal. So BU throw coming up 13 minutes into this first half. BC and BU, the Eagles, who are unbeaten in their last nine games against the Terriers, going back to 2012. Last year at Nickerson Field, it was a nil-nil tie, which was BU's first shutout in the series since the last time that the Terriers won back in 2012. And Montali had seven saves in that game against the Eagles. That was a season high at the moment. It was an interesting game because it was, you look at the final shot numbers and they seem skewed, but it was really just the second half. The first half, shots were even, but they were 10-2 in favor of BC in the second half. So the majority of those saves came in the second half, but it ended at an ill-nil final. We talked about the last BU win coming here at Newton. She gives them some confidence. Back in 2012, Derek McCaffrey scored the game winner in the 55th minute. There's Javi O'Neal. Got two Terriers on him, peels away, finds Burkhart moving in. Burkhart chips one on. Dos Santos can't quite steer the header on goal. Got a piece of it. And Gundelak, boy, does a great job to keep it in at first, though the pass ends up coming out on the near side. Yeah, going back to that last opportunity for Dos Santos, just had too much air under it on the pass, so he was trying to read that jump and try to get a header on it so he could put it on target, but just misplayed it, so the jump didn't get him enough to put enough power behind the header. 
Foul called on Andrew Rent, a senior, led BU in assists last year with five. That's one so far this year, came against St. Joe's. O'Neal for Alfie Hughes. Hughes is in front, pass comes back, and Dos Santos' shot is blocked. Andrew Rent again. Actually, Quinn Della Mater was in there as well. And it sets up another corner kick for BC. Excellent chance there as O'Neal set up Alfie Hughes. Yeah, Rent's been a staple on that back line. It started all the games except that UNH game earlier this year for the Terriers. Farwell comes wide. Dos Santos gives it back for Farwell. Dos Santos again. And no problem that time for Montali. Well, BC definitely sees something with Dos Santos going against the senior Ryan Lee that they like a couple of opportunities so far for the freshmen to try to expose that defense. And Ryan Lee specifically just hasn't, hasn't been able to do it. The second line of defense, third line of defense have been able to block those shots. Eagles really doing a lot of work pressuring on the back line of BU. And it's even the off the ball stuff too, right? It's all the players moving, trying to make sure that they have a solid back line and communication is key. BU trying to answer with the counter. Their best chance was on the counter earlier. Alex Bonington for Rent. CJ Williams chasing Rent into the corner, does not let him get around. And Jonathan Murphy clears it out on the near side. Yeah, Rent had a good angle to go around Williams, but CJ does a good job just keeping the arms up, keeping him at bay and cutting off the angle. Della Mater for Colin Innes. This time, Ryan Lee cutting right through the middle. Lee gets it over for Matulis. Chance for Rent is off of Gundelak. And the Eagles trying to use their transition game, which I thought they really did a nice job of against Pitt. That's a game that you know, we were talking about in years past. BC might kind of get a little lax towards the end, just try to keep it safe, play for a safe tie. It felt like in that pit game, it was back and forth. Even late in that game, there was opportunities for both teams. There was clear control on both sides throughout the course of the game. Even in a nil-nil game, shots were pretty even. And a, a, a result that is not necessarily as they will stop the clock here is Alfie Hughes moving a little bit gingerly. So they will call for the trainer to come out. It was that play on the near side that just kind of a little awkward in the collision. Not even the collision so much, just kind of two guys going for the ball more than anything. And then his foot kind of got caught up there too. So it's good to see him walking off. He'll just kind of try to stretch it out here on the near sideline. First half, you can get those injury subs back in. Bob Thompson has not inserted a new person into the game yet. So for now, the Eagles will be down a body so they can bring Alfie right back in if he is able. And you'll likely see Boston College just try to control some possession here. Ted Cargill plays it wide for O'Neal. Javi O'Neal going to work, has space to cross. Header try Murphy, right for that back corner. And BU does a good job to keep it out. So how about that chance for the Eagles, even down a man at the moment? And that was just great vision from Cargill to see Chavi creeping on the far side, keep that pass on side. And then Chavi is doing what Chavi does all season long, trying to find the cross inside the box. Couple of white jerseys in there, had an opportunity. BC's a little upset. They thought a handball happened inside the box. Alfie Hughes still trying to 
stretch out in front of the Boston College bench. This is where if you're BU, you take advantage of the shorthanded BC and try to push it up, get numbers to your advantage, even if you just set up a corner or a set piece on a free kick. Colin Innes goes deep and wide, and Leon Musil does a good job to come out and play it. Third time, Yusuf has been aggressive in going after the ball, not allowing BU to control it at the top of the 18. Looks like BC is actually about to sub, so. Augie Bawadi looks like he's ready to come in. Here's some of those numbers that we talked about. Last year, the nil-nil tie between the Eagles and the Terriers at historic Nickerson Field. So Augie Bowati will come in, the sophomore from Ghana, who returned from injury himself against Pitt. That was his first appearance since the opener. Bowati, the ACC preseason watch list selection for the Eagles. And just another important piece to have in the top part of the midfield to give the Eagles an opportunity. Again, you know, we've talked so much about Bob Thompson and what he's trying to do with this group and the fact this group is so young. Over 70% of their field minutes are either freshmen or sophomores on this Eagles team. And with the new system they're implementing, you can really see some of the signs on defense. But it's still the next step is about trying to find some of those goals. And it has been a team that is still looking for that finishing and that scoring touch here of late. Yeah, and you can see it, whether it's Xavi O'Neal on the outside or Alfie Hughes from the top of the 18. I'd really like to see Jonathan Murphy try to find some more offense, more, more shots, taking more shots from the outside and, and try to put some more pressure on these defenses that he's playing against. They have some, some firing capabilities from a couple of these young players, but you also, you're also expecting it from some of the upperclassmen that have been here already, as in Murphy. I mean, you think back of that first goal for Jonathan Murphy this year, it was just a golasso that came from outside the box. That, those are the types of shots that the system allows you to take. Here's Murphy again, throws the cross. Chanson back, and we're gonna have a kick coming up. Aiden Farwell taken down in the box. And Boston College will have a PK opportunity for the first time this season. Well, Farwell was upset last time about the play inside the box. This time, gets an opportunity on the foul. It's going to be his first PK opportunity in his BC career. So a great chance here for the Eagles, who had really earned some of these opportunities here over the last few minutes. And Aiden Farwell will take the PK against Montali. Aiden Farwell with his first goal since October 8th of 2021 at Virginia. After missing all of last season due to injury and working his way back. And that's got to feel so good for him to see it go through the net now that he's finally back healthy. And he gives the Eagles a 1-0 lead. Yeah, that was a shot with authority there for Farwell. You said it's second goal. First came at Virginia and just a phenomenal strike there with poise goes right at it knew what spot he wanted to pick Montali went the opposite way so an easy 1-0 lead here for the Eagles but a really well-earned corner as well and you can see what Boston College when you have Chavi O'Neal on the left side and whether it's Alfie Hughes or Dos Santos or Bowati sending those crosses through they've been really good at building the momentum and the opportunities. But again, the next step finishing that time, it's an earned PK. 
and I would say an earned result here in a 1-0 lead in the 22nd minute. And Boston College pushing back. Another chance here. Murphy started that ball. He won it back outside the 18 and brought it inside. Xavi O'Neal gets to a spot. And that is... Looked like it didn't hit anybody. O'Neal was trying to deflect it off of what seemed like seven or eight feet in there for the Terriers, but it ends up being ruled a goal kick by Daniel Pop, our referee tonight. Kind of like Luis Mendoza from Mighty Ducks, but except he's on the pitch. He just goes too fast sometimes, can't stop, and the ball just keeps going. That's a great reference. <laughs> you know, in some ways, we say the date. It hasn't been as many games because there's been a couple of weeks here where Boston College has only had one game weeks. But it's the Eagles' first goal since September 1st. More importantly, the Eagles' first goal in three games, let's call it. And sometimes even just scoring can kind of just take the monkey off your back in, in a sense, in a lot of ways, just to see it go through. And that can be something that you can really build off of here if you're BC. Yeah, and I think it goes back to the pick game we were talking about, just having that result, knowing that there was opportunities left on the pitch in that game and knowing that you can take it to your rival in the midweek game. It's a good start for the Eagles. We've been talking about them trying to generate more shots from the outside, more opportunities. And so far in this game, BU came early on with a task. They controlled the pace, but BC has responded. It's the second time Cargill and Lau have collided. Ryan Lau, worse for wear, a couple of times here on the near side. Augie Bowati, good pressure. And Griffin Roach, the senior. Patriot League Defensive Player of the Year last year, Griffin Roach from Canton just down the road. BU stretching forward. Great chance here. Boddington kind of lost the handle on it and Augie Bowati plays it forward for BC. It was Dos Santos who was out front. Just couldn't cleanly field it. Looked like he was trying to line up a shot and then pass it out when he saw the traffic in front but just had no bodies there. Javi O'Neal steps up, forces play back here for BU. Reved works through Delamater. This is what BC has done really well here in the first half is pushing Boston University back, forcing the passes to go back towards the back line, or even their keeper. They haven't had strung together passes yet since the opening five, 10 minutes. Oh, good directional header there for Bonnington. He goes wide, John Roman with a little bit of space, but again, the Eagles back line is in good position. CJ Williams stepped up, but then at the end of it, a whistle called against Williams and a free kick coming up here for BU. So a good job by Roman after initially losing the handle, but getting it back and earning the foul call to set up the free kick. Yeah, CJ's momentum, CJ Williams' momentum just took him right into Roman, and Roman, right place, right time to draw that free kick. This is a good position here for the Terriers. We were talking about they're really good on the set pieces this season. Quinn Matulis, the grad student from Oak Park, Illinois, Second team all Patriot League selection last year. Matulis right on, and it goes! He powers it through, Musio. And it's 1-1. That's just beautiful from the outside to line it up, get enough curve on it so it's going away from the diving Musio. And then it goes off the mitts and goes in. So not enough space there to cover for the Boston College goalkeeper. So that's a good strike there for Matulis. And it equalizes this one against the rivals.
So Matulis decides to take the opportunity straight on off the free kick. And after scoring in each of the first two games of the season, adds his third goal of the year. And in the 27th minute following the Eagles 22nd minute goal to make it 1-1. Well, if you thought these games would go scoreless like it did last year, you got another thing coming for you. That was once in the, what, 47 meetings that we have now. So these two teams, they love to play. They love to find the back of the net. It's a surprise the scoring didn't start earlier. Well, certainly not for lack of chances. We had first corner kick came less than 30 seconds in tonight. Colin Innes. Ball still out wide. Flag was up. On the far side. It was Daniel Kim who just came into the game for Andrew Rent. And then Aiton Rosen, the senior from Toronto, also just checked into the game, replacing Bonington. Rosen coming off that goal against Lehigh. It was a good performance for BU at Nickerson Field to pick up their first conference win. Well, it's really a transitional year last year for BU in a lot of ways under Kevin Nyland, who was an assistant coach here at Boston College Going back to the 2010 and 2011 seasons under Ed Kelly, the Eagles' former head coach. And last year we mentioned 4-2-3 and three in the Patriot League, finishing second in the league. Their most wins since 2017. Their first time making it back to the Patriot League tournament for the first time since 2018. Picked second in the preseason in the P Patriot League once again this year, only behind Navy. Yeah, and his time here with Boston College was able to take the Eagles to an ACC tournament quarterfinals and also that 2011 ACC title game. Some pretty good years for Boston College where they're making the NCAA tournament. Had a big run a couple of years later in 2015. That Ed Kelly coaching tree is pretty big as well. Nice move. Matulis knocked out and earns a corner. Dangerous tackle inside the box there. It was Murphy and Dos Santos, but good job just keeping it clean, not to give a penalty, a penalty kick inside that 18. So corner kick number three coming up for the Terriers. And go wide. Reved lets it go by for the chance from Ryan Lee. And that's knocked out off of Boston College again. Well, this is where BU excels. They can really wear you down on these set pieces, continuing one corner to the other. And good angle. This is a side where Matulis just scored his free kick. So expect something to come to the top side of the box here. A little shorter, but direct still inside the box. Oh my, it just missed. It was Diego Rived who had the opportunity for BU. The sophomore from Spain had a pretty good look at it, just missed it wide. Yeah, second start today for Rived. He played and started against Merrimack. That was the 2 0 loss for the Terriers, but that one was a strike. Had the opening, just shot it wide. Well, BU really getting some momentum after that goal. Yeah, all the chances since the goal, those few minutes have belonged to BU. They've really continued to push things forward here. Eagles try to reestablish their possession game. And Xavi O'Neill up the left side, working against Roman. Cross for Murphy. 
Remember, the Eagles subbed out Alfie Hughes early in this game today after he was a little bit banged up. Dos Santos cuts across. That is knocked out. Another corner coming up. So a heavy cornered game. It's a BU team that really does not average all that many. They only average about two and a half corners per game. Boston College is closer to six. Corners right now are four, three in favor of the Terriers. And if you're BC, you want to get more action inside towards the box. Farwell, who scored off the PK earlier, gets it back from Dos Santos. Dos Santos plays it through, punched out by Montelli. Sent right back in. O'Neill was over there, Dos Santos as well. He gets forced off by Aiton Rosen. That's good for BU, forcing BC all the way back after back-to-back -back opportunities inside the box. Get a moment to reset, set up your formation and try to get a counter opportunity or a turnover here. Good pressure by John Roman. And using his speed to follow it up, but that left arm's gonna get extended there. Just overran his man a bit and is called for the foul. That's a great job by Ted Cargill to get back to the spot, force that turnover there from Boston University. It was a good block shot that led to an opportunity, but another good defensive play here for the Eagles. And we talked about just the versatility of Cargill. We talked about Murphy. When you're able to switch positions that easily and play defense, that's a tough ask. Ball is out for a throw for BU. Definitely feels as if the momentum of this game has shifted a bit to the Terriers. Ryan Lau. It's a little too strong on the touch from Rosen. Two subs coming in for Boston College, Drew Serafino and Christian Behar into the game. Will replace Farwell and Xavi O'Neill. more players that saw action. Serafino also another player like Farwell who's coming back from injury, but Behar played in 13 games as a freshman. was too tall for Murphy. I like how BC has switched directions north and south here, whether it's Murphy creeping in behind or Chavi O'Neal on the opposite side. You just gotta connect on those outlet passes. It haven't, they haven't allowed for the forwards to break out down the wings. done a nice job of pushing back here. Innes gets it through the middle. It's Daniel Kim trying to reestablish. And then once again, Roman leaves it back for Lau. This is one of those kind of the next step for BC as a young team. When you get into these moments where it feels like the, in this case, BU is kind of taking over the momentum, taking over the possession a little bit. How quickly can you get it back? 
It's one of those things as you can kind of teach the system, you can drill it as much as possible, but really these moments only come from playing in-game. And for a team of such heavily first years and second years, this really becomes that learning experience on the fly in a really important game. Yeah, you can't really simulate game action. Game action is game action, and sometimes you just got to be able to adjust in the game and make those small changes, whether it's tactically or defensively, that will allow you to create more opportunities on the offensive end. So Santos had that left arm wrapped around. So Quinn Delamater is the beneficiary of the whistle. Colin Innes. Ryan Lau. Delamater fires it forward. And there is Leon Musil. And again, it's BU controlling the pace, trying to force BC backwards. And these short passes have really broken down the defense throughout this game. And they're going right back to that. And now the high press defensively to force BC back. Down to 7.42 remaining in this first half. Shots are even for a piece. Shots on goal are two each. And of course, one each is foul in the back of the net. Farwell for BC on the PK in the 22nd minute, and Quinn Matulis off of the free kick in the 27th minute. You talked about BU being pretty good on corners and set pieces so far this year, and we saw that on display. Just not afraid to shoot. They're not afraid to send bodies in the box and try to get a rebound. That's the type of offense you want. You want to be able to play free and play to your style. Ennis comes for Ryan Lau. Good pass forward for Rosen. Wide for Lau. Kim couldn't quite hold it in. But I like that idea there for BU. You're moving it north, east, west. You're going around. You're forcing BC's defense, who a lot of these players have played a lot of these minutes here today. You're forcing them to really dig deep. And so if you can get a lapse in judgment, just a mistake defensively, you can capitalize it if you're the Terrier. So I like that movement. I like that possession. Now let's see how BC responds. Really, when Boston College was at its best earlier, it was that high press. And BU has not allowed the Eagles to do that here of late because they haven't had a ball in the spot where the Eagles can do it of late. Yeah, just control has been sloppy as it's been on that last possession. You just can't give the ball up in the attacking third. Good play by Cargill, though, to take it away. And Cargill on it now for Boston College. Ochoa. Plays it forward. Cross comes through. That was Behar. CJ Williams now again stepping up into the play a bit. Cargill wide. Jonathan Murphy off to his left foot. May have been deflected looking for Christian Behar playing in his fourth game of the year. The sophomore defender from Lawrence Mass. Say get off me to the defender over there. Well, the most sustained possession time here for the Eagles in a bit. Bawadi. Again, content to go to the back line. Good pressure by the Terriers. But C.J. Williams corral. Yeah, Matulis came in to play that ball to force BC back. Here is Murphy. That is uncalled, and I think that was the correct call, but then Murphy after not getting the call first, but then kind of kept going a bit too much and is called for the yellow. 
That's a frustration card there on Murphy. You'd like to see him take that overlapping run with Dos Santos. Dos Santos was coming from behind. Both defenders came up to the ball with Murphy, so he had that runner, just didn't see him, decided to take the shot, and was blocked out. and Lau. Well, BU's fine taking this result into halftime. They're okay. They, they, they'll have Boston College try to come and press them. This is a big game for BU. Dos Santos is frustrated on the near side. You were talking about the youth of this team. You can see it now with the frustration fouls happening here in the last four or five minutes. It's sliding play. Serafino is still trying to make up for it. It was Rived who made the play for BU. And that goes out on the near side. That was Griffin Roach tied up with Serafino. So yeah, Serafino has a case there. That was a lot of boot on the defender from Roach that forced Serafino to lose his positioning, and then the ball rolls out of play. So the assistant referee was right on top of it, has a better visual than we do up here in the booth, so he saw that one, called it cleanly for the Terriers. Henry O'Kenla, the first year from London, comes into the game for Boston College. And Jonathan Murphy will come out for the Eagles. One of three Englishmen on this Eagles roster this year, along with Cargill and Alfie Hughes. Cargill got knocked down. But they will play on with 2.30 remaining in this first half. Serafino gives it off Dos Santos. See how aggressive Boston College wants to be with the ball right now with two minutes to go in the first. Bawadi got through, Bawadi deflected, and it goes! Argy Bawadi! First career goal gives the Eagles a 2-1 lead. What a way to do it against the rivals of Boston University. Boadi put a lot behind that shot. We've seen some ferocious shots taken. This is inside the 18. Had some pressure coming. Deflects and goes in. You just said, how is Boston College going to attack? They went right at it from the outside. They've been using that wing to create opportunities inside the 18. This time it pays off. It felt like during that whole stretch where BU had really pushed back and had possession and felt like had the momentum, there really wasn't any opportunity for BC up front, but the thing that the Eagles had done best tonight was when they were up front was just kind of going and just pushing and whatever happened, happened, and whether it was the crosses or that time, Boati just sending it right through and ends up getting a deflection and not much that Francesco Montali could do with it. So the Eagles lead 2-1. And now we'll see if the Terriers push back. That is too far. And we'll go out for a goal kick with 1.13 to go. That's just a clean cross on the far side to open up that space. Nobody back door for the Terriers, but that's a good look. You know, we're talking about that response from Boadi, and it just shows you 
BC, it felt like, got a little too cute in, in, in midway through this game. They were trying to find the right pass, trying to find the right player to pass it to. That time, as you said, just attack. Once they get into that attacking third, when they're putting pressure inside that 18, it causes havoc for defenses. We saw it against Pittsburgh. We've seen it all season long. It's really about sticking to the game plan as this game goes on and not kind of resting on your laurels. So the 44th minute goal by Bowati is the difference at the moment. Is there more late? And a foul against BC. Serafino. Or I beg your pardon, Behar. It's kind of too far extended. Well, and Behar has been running hard down the wing since he's been subbed in. He's been trying to feed crosses inside. That time just got too much defender in front of him. And that'll do it for the first half. A 2-1 Boston College lead. Farwell in the PK. Second half, it's not going to be easy. BU's not going to go away easily here in the second half. So we get started in the second half. Appreciate you joining us tonight for this battle of ComAv on the pitch. BC and BU. Eagles trying to extend what is a nine-match unbeaten streak against the Terriers. Going back to 2012, which was BU's last win in this series. In August 27th of 2012, BU came to Newton and came away with a 1-0 victory. That's what they're looking for here today. It would have to be in comeback fashion. But the Terriers, we've talked about it. They are a Patriot League, one of the top teams in the Patriot League for a reason. They're trying to get back to the NCAA tournament. They know that these local games, especially against a rival in Boston College, mean a lot. So again, I thought one of the crucial pieces that we've talked about was how does this young Boston College team, when they get in a spot where they really kind of lost the control of play for a little bit, how do they push back in that moment? And, you know, maybe took them a few minutes to get there, but eventually Bowati just did a great job just kind of firing one forward, maybe gets a chance to do it again, though taken down in the run of play. You know, if this was in the last five minutes of the first half, we would have seen that call. But because this is early on in the second, that's just allowing them to play here early on. Boati, with the advantage, continue the momentum. But that's what we're going to see here in the second half. Some tough nose, some hard playing, some hard tackles. Everything, you know, both all, bo obviously both teams want it to be clean. But at the end of the day, you got to try to win possession. And you see BU trying to earn possessions back here against this BC team. Jack Burkhart gives it over to C.J. Williams. Behar comes back to get it. And Ochoa, the Eagles captain. You know, just talking about that youth, Eric, it's when you have a player like Bawadi who can come in and impact the game, I know he's a sophomore, but he adds that, that firepower that we've been talking about that BC has miss, been missing so far this season. Williams plays it all the way to midfield, answered back here by BU. This is one where the Eagles have had it in deep, but have stayed on possession this whole time, even with BU pressing high. I was just going to say the high press, they're going back to it here to start the second half. It really helped them in the first half create turnovers and, and some counter opportunities. Oh, Kenla with a diving play by Diego Rive. Bajar, stay wide, Bajar. Behar trying to slip it through, couldn't quite get there. And a whistle in the midfield. Officials not hearing it from Ted Cargill there. That one called quickly and Cargill had some words. Gundalak tied up back with Andrew Rent. And that is out and ruled a goal kick. 
can see why they love Gundlach back there. He's just so good. His size allows him to, to protect the ball so well, especially inside the 18, that you have such good size and strength on that back line that that's why BC is okay playing three back there. And it was one of the reasons that Gundelak really had a leg up in terms of winning the job in camp it was because coming over from Germany, Gundelak, who played with Nuremberg, FC Nuremberg, played for Nuremberg too a little bit as well, basically played the same system that Bob Thompson was trying to implement this season. So that was really an advantage because so much is put upon the backs and their decision making in these situations and reading the pressers and making the right pass based on where the pressers are coming, whether they're coming wide or coming through the middle. And so much of what the Eagles are trying to do and develop starts from there and such a mental game that the experience you have playing it becomes so important. And that was a big asset for someone like Gundala. Good pressure here, Dos Santos. Little tug on the jersey, and the flag's gonna come out. Yeah, we're gonna see a card on that one. That was advantage there for the Eagles. Dos Santos wanted it to be played in advantage. The far assistant had the flag up immediately. There was a little tug on the jersey first, and that wasn't necessarily called, but then the second portion, when Della Mater kind of got his arm wrapped up with Dos Santos and took him down, so then the advantage was kind of lost there was why that the whistle comes out there and that's where the card comes. So Quinn Della Mater is called for the foul and the Eagles will get a free kick. If you're BC, I want this in a little bit closer than where it is now, but this is a good position to try to get across inside the box. BC has gone short a couple of times on these free kicks. Wonder if they'll go with Dos Santos sending it across. Ted Cargill came off for Boston College. It wasn't a subbing situation. I think he might have had some blood on him. So he has to get that cleaned off. It's NCAA rules. Yeah, it looks like Cargill has been cleared so he can come back in before this free kick. Or actually will not come in before the free kick. Dos Santos to take it. Long ball through, and it's caught clean by Montali. I haven't seen Montali be as aggressive throughout this game, but that one's a good one to, to get it in the air, see it. You have two defenders marking both men in the box for the Eagles, so it gives you a clean lane to the ball. He secures it nicely, and now a good chance for BU to go the other way. So Cargill back in there now for Boston College. The lead two to one. Again, if you're just joining us in Farwell in the 22nd minute on a PK, PK that he earned in the box to give the Eagles the one nil lead. Quinn Matulis on a free kick answered for BU in the 27th minute, his third goal of the season. And then Augie Boati in the 44th minute, pushing the momentum back to the Eagles. Nice move by Reved, pulling away from the Eagles' defense. You know, these games you always get up for, whether you're a player, a coach, a fan, these rivalry games, the battle of Com Ave, whether it's football, baseball, basketball, soccer, everybody's excited for these games, especially here in the, the Boston area. Oh, Kenla, nice touch to Dos Santos. And Marco Dos Santos on the run, and they're going to call again. The whistle, you can see the arm get on that shoulder. It was Griffin Roach trying to catch up defensively. Oh, hey, stay on your side. Yeah, and that just shows you the speed from Dos Santos. He's a freshman. Both times he's had an opportunity to, to run freely into the attacking third. BU has nothing to do but foul him because he's that fast and that capable of getting away and scoring. You know, for a kid who decided to stay here locally at Boston College because he's, he's a local product from New Hampshire, wanted to be close to his family. His family comes out to watch him, support him every game. That's kind of what you want. You want to see him kind of develop into a role where you can use him in that front forward position. Colin Ennis was the one who gets called for the yellow. So back-to-back -back yellow cards here 
on BU. That ball for Dos Santos, too long. I don't know if you can hear that on the on the mics down that we have, but Boston College running freely into the boxes and their center backs aren't being marked. That's what the coaches are saying. So you got to be able to communicate with your defenders to make sure that those two forwards or, or the wings that are coming in, creeping by back door are being marked by the defenders up front. That's kind of on Matali and some of the defenders to communicate that. Oh, that's bounce. It's a wide open net and the Terriers answer. Miscommunication in the box between Murcio and Williams, and it's 2-2. Two -two. Well, Rent taking advantage. He's been in the box and involved a lot, trying to cause havoc against this BC defense. This time, he's the beneficiary of a, just a mental mistake there and a lack of communication between Boston College, the defender and the goalkeeper. And now Rent, his first goal of the season. So Andrew Rent in the 53rd minute takes advantage. Musio was coming out, the back line moving to the edge of the box, trying to make the play, and they both kind of came together. The ball ends up slipping behind. Again, Musio has not played quite as much as this group. Brennan Klein, the starter, not available today due to an injury at the end of that pit game on Friday. So 2-2 two -two is the score here. Just shows you how much momentum can turn between these two programs. You know, it felt like BC was dominating the first seven minutes of this contest. And just like that, BU finds an equalizer on a mistake. And that's the momentum the Terriers can use to try to take their first lead. Going to lock over top, flag is up. Official giving a warning there to Serafino on the delayed game. I don't think it was ill, Ill intention there from Serafino. I think he was just carrying his momentum, trying to hit it back to the goalkeeper. I'm kind of upset NCAA rules changed, you know, four overtime games in these series against BC and BU, and now we might not potentially see an overtime, Eric. I think you're the only one that's upset. <laughs> <laughs> Rule was changed last year in both the men's and women's games, so no overtime, a game that finishes regulation as a tie, will go down in the book as such. BU pushing back here, really nice work to get through. And then a whistle here with the BU player going down right on the edge of the box. That's Quinn Matulis, the goal scorer earlier, and a card has come out here against the Eagles. Yeah, I think Gundelach was the one who assessed the yellow card. And this is another good position on the set piece for Boston University. Can't let your momentum take you into the, the player there, and that's where the foul was called. Really good passing there by the Terriers from about midfield on. Matulis scored from farther out than this on the opposite side. Oh, that was coming from the right side of the box rather than here on the left. And beat Musio to the post. Chance to do it again in a 2-2 game. Are you trying to take the lead for the first time tonight? Lucio's got to make sure that wall is solid in front. We saw Matulis go just beyond the wall on his first goal. That's right into the wall. And comes all the way out for the throw. That's what you want. You want to make sure that wall protects. So BC's first line of defense stands tall there on the set piece. The 
you still on possession here. Brent's trying to get around Serafino, pushes it forward right to the edge of the box, but a good play by Burkhardt to step up. And what could have been a clean run coming in for BU. Aiden Bone, who's in there, by the way, for the first time for BU, a senior. BU still pushing back here. Pass wide, looking for Ryan Lee. It is a bit too far. And a throw in for Boston College. And now BU really feeling it after that foul and scoring the, the equalizer here. They're really pushing BC back defensively. And Eagles had a good chance there on the outlet pass to Dos Santos, but it was just right into 3D. Terriers there deep in the zone that Dos Santos didn't have room to play it. We saw late in the first half, BC had possession, they slowly moved it up, and then they were able to attack in the attacking third. I think they're going right back to that kind of mentality this here. This is how they want to play, kind of reestablishing things. Okenla settles it down for Bowati. John Roman defended Bowati well, and it's goal kick. Yeah, Bowati wanted some contact there, but Good job by Roman to just fight him off. Not too much contact to get the foul, but enough to just force Bawadi off the ball. Settle down for Matulis. Andy Bawadi forcing it forward. Here's Okenla. And the referee, he immediately said he made a mistake. It was a foul called, and our referee, Daniel Pop, immediately held his hand up, said, should have played the advantage, and made a mistake blowing the whistle. It is still a foul called I, against BC. I love that. I just, you know, when you're able to take responsibility and just say, hey, look, immediately he said, no, that's that's my bad. I should have played the advantage. When you have an official who can take responsibility like that, you, you got to tip your cap to him. It's been a pretty evenly called game on fouls-wise and pretty good officiated game as well. So an unlucky break for Boston College. Okenla chips it on. Oh, it was loose for a moment with Serafino, but the flag was up on the far side anyway. You said it, Eric. When they're in that attacking third, they go right to net. They are not afraid to turn and look for opportunities. That time, Serafino moves from all the way on the back line to come in the wing on the right side. It's a good job by Okenla a couple of times now with smooth touches to spring forward the offense. No, first One of those things that Bob Thompson was telling us at the beginning of the season when talking about the, the thing he's implementing with this system is it's less about style, it's less about possession time, it's can we break down that back line more? Can we get not just more chances, but more clear chances? Can we get more shots? Can we get more of them on target? And you are seeing some of that. But the next step is about, again, taking those moments when it feels like you're really pressed on and there's a lot of momentum going the wrong way. How do you change that? And that was actually a pretty good sequence for the Eagles, using their back line, settling down, then pushing forward. Had the run by Okenla that got called off, but eventually getting those chances to continue to push forward and sort of limiting what was a much shorter run for BU than what they had on possession in that first half. Well, and these possessions take away chances from BU. BU loves to go quick. They love to keep the pace that, that they like to play with. So if you're holding on to the ball and just moving forward, you, you continue that possession battle and, and earn it. So you, you're forcing BU, BU players to come out of their typical positions. Bawadi back for Diego Ochoa. Some soccer matches really feel like a chess match, right? Where you go back and forth, you exchange moves. This one has felt like that. BC had momentum, BU had momentum, back and forth we've gone, and now it feels like BC is going right back to their game plan as we've talked about in trying to move this ball forward. They 
Dehart trying to get around and was whistled. You have to figure this game is only going to get more physical as we continue to go on. Yeah, it felt like in the first half it was pretty clean. Then the last 10 minutes it got a little chippier. This start of the second half feels the same way. It's pretty clean. Both teams going back and forth. Some fouls are called. But, you know, both teams want to win. They don't, they don't want to settle for a tie going into the weekend in conference play. They want to be able to take points with them into conference play. Two subs coming in for Boston College. Aiden Farwell and Chavi O'Neal will come back into the game. Replacing Augie Bawadi and Christian Behar. So a nice run by Bawadi. Again, continuing to get back to full health. Scores his first career goal in the first half. And last year got his first career point against Siena. This year picks up his first career goal. We talked about his in injury early on. And to see him back, to see him playing the way he was playing today, it looks like he's, you know, maybe a couple, couple games, maybe a couple couple weeks away from returning to full health and Boston College would love to have him at full health. And these were spots where the Eagles were pressing pretty high, but the Terriers have done a really good job taking those chances away by forcing the ball in deeper down this end. I think BC has respected the counter a little bit better. Here as the game has progressed, seeing how fast BU likes to move. Looks like there was some confusion between the referee and then the ref on the near side of who made last contact. And they're going to come together and decide that it should be Eagles ball. I think BU wanted a tip. And they got it for a moment, but looks like cleats hit there, so goes right back to BC. There's your summary. Farwell first on the PK, Matulis on a free kick. Bowati in the late stages of the first half, and then Rent takes advantage of a bit of a miscue on the back line and finds an open net. To bring us where we are right now, 2-2 two, two game. Jason Zacharias, the first year from Bill Ricca, in for the first time for BU, replacing Matulis. Familiar with a couple of these players, also part of that New England Revolution's U18 team in his senior year. A lot of overlap between some of the players for each of these teams. Especially in a situation where we get this many local players. Dos Santos' pass got knocked back. Burkhart on possession. And CJ Williams plays it over to Ochoa. Space and a lead ball looking for Chavi O'Neill on the left side. And that is knocked out. BU throw with 26 47 remaining here in the second. The substitute of Chavi O'Neill, you're going to look for BC on this left side. We talked about Ryan Lee early on. There's a speed mismatch there with O'Neill and Lee, so if you can expose it, it's going to benefit the Eagles, but that's kind of why you'll see O'Neill riding that, that back line to make sure he's on side. Over for Farwell. O'Neill in space on the left side. Chavi O'Neill nearly slipped and then in fact did but managed to knock it out and earn a corner Eagles like going short with most of these corners Ochoa for Dos Santos back for O'Neal centering ball through and the header missed well, Behar had a good chance on the back side of that one Serafino on the feed. Really good ball. I 
again. Xavi O'Neal so dangerous on that left side. Creates so much. We've seen that both ways today, especially BC. They have gone with those short corners pretty consistently all year. I love the overlapping runs to send decoys around where, you know, the defense has to move and open up some space. It's a good job not giving up on the play there for the Terriers. Luke Dunn. It just came in for John Roman for BU. That pass was a little too far behind. And Cargill will try to work out of a tight area. Finds it forward for Okenla. A freshman knocked off by Griffin Roach. How about the effort for Ted Cargill? Was stuck in traffic, had to maneuver out of it, and then clear some space. Almost sprung Okenla forward, but then tracks it back down defensively and gets right back in position. called for the foul against Aiden Bone. It's a good 50-50 ball. Remember, no more overtime in NCAA soccer. I think our producer did that just because I said I loved overtime. <laughs> <laughs> It's all right. That's how we get playoff, you know, playoff soccer later on in the season. You know, BU's coming off of a 9-8 PKs game in the Patriot League last year. I mean, that's I love that kind of soccer. <laughs> a wild finish. BU ended up losing to Navy in the semifinal. Navy, who is picked to win the league this year. That's turned over. What a chance. Zacharias got rid of it to Innes, and it's in on Musio. Would have loved to see him take that shot off the right foot instead of trying to put it back on the left. He had the opening, had a defender as a shield in front of Musio. I'm talking about this BU team. They, they lost last year, but the last time in 2018, 2017, they made it to the semifinals and lost to PKs that year too. So some heartbreaking losses for BU in the Patriot League. You know, if there's a year they feel confident, this is the year. It's definitely been building to this point. 2021, they were 4-9-3 and three last year to 6-5-7. and seven. So you see the jump year over year. This ball comes through, and it's knocked down well. That was Moritz Gundelach for Boston College. Ahead for Okenla. Cleared out by BU. Subs coming in here on both sides. For the Terriers, Kevin Torres is into the game for the first time. Neil Carlson, the junior from Alabama, also in for the first time. And Ryan Lee returns for Boston College. Augie Bawadi back into the game. And Jonathan Murphy returns as well for the Eagles. So this is a little bit of a different look for BC with Bawadi back in, and that moves Farwell back out of the kind of true striker role up top. So Farwell now just off on the near side. This is played over top for Murphy, but the flag was up on the far side. I do like the options that you have Murphy on the right, you have Chavi O'Neal in the middle, and Farwell, who's playing kind of that mid forward position, creeping in on the left side wing. So you have options if you're there, if you're right there in the middle trying to find where to go. This time they went the opposite, and that was offside. They had Farwell coming near side, who stayed onside. Down to 21 minutes remaining tonight in a 2-2 game between Boston College and Boston University. Another set of subs coming in. Giuseppe Bagnado, the sophomore from Brooklyn, is in the game for BU, and Connor Gibson, who has missed the last couple of games for BC, 
returns for the Eagles. And Gibson didn't play in his freshman year, but BC loves what he's done in the offseason, the work he's put in, and he's been able to see some action this year. Rare sub for Diego Ochoa for Boston College. He's played the third most minutes of the Eagles field players so far this year. A little bit of a tie up on the far side between Carlson who just came into the game, the junior and Dos Santos. Well, Dos Santos might be a freshman, but he's not backing down from anybody. Carlson who started his career in 2021 at SMU. Who will be joining the ACC coming up next year. Played nine games and scored a goal with BU last year. So you have Dos Santos a touch farther back, Farwell a touch farther back in this offensive look. And Farwell earns the foul. Well, that's what they want, Bob Thompson and his coaching staff. Farwell to come inside and draw defenders. Javi O'Neal on the left side. Gundalak steps up. Moritz Gundelock plays it on and wide for O'Neal. Luke Dunn got a piece of it for BU, so it's a throw in for the Eagles. You know, we mentioned this early on, but Gibson then moves from the midfield to take Gundelock's position there on that back line. Just that's, that being able to be on the same page like that, that synchronized defense for the Eagles really allows them to, as we talked about, play free and move forward knowing that your teammate has your back. Ball is out past Dos Santos. BU throw, 18-10, remaining in this second half. Back for Musio. That was too far for Chavi O'Neal. He had him too, so he puts his arm up saying, hey, my bad, just mistimed the pass and threw it too far towards the inside of the 18 instead of keeping it on the outside. Chavi loves it on the outside. If you can keep it outside of the 18 towards the corner flag, that's where he can excel. And he's so dangerous out there. Kind of hit a low point, right? It felt like back and forth in this game, kind of where we were midway through the first half where both teams had opportunities, both teams had scored, and now it's feeling out. Like, how, how are we going to see this next breakout, this next phase of the game? And BC going right back to their possession game. Eagles using their back line, waiting to make their move. Cargill through the middle. There was space between BU sixes, and it allows Bawadi to find O'Neal, but the flag was up. Just mistimed it. O'Neal got right behind the defenders. He split two defenders to try to sneak in, but just a foot ahead of that offside line. But kind of a great example of what BC's trying to do, right? BU kind of opened up a little bit and allowed the back line to push through Cargill, who quickly got it out wide. It's a good looking design. Yeah, you can hear it, when you, whenever you hear your teammates saying turn, that means you got enough space to try to make a play and Cargill has been so good in his decision making this season, had a good chance there. Good ball over top, Musial has to come out and does so ahead of Giuseppe Bagnato. We talked about the aggressive play for Musio. He's made some really good decisions. Javi O'Neal pushing forward again. O'Neal comes to his left. Bagnato knocks him out. Corner kick coming up for Boston College. 
That's just good defense. Bagnato had his momentum taking him away and still able to put a foot on it to clear it out without fouling O'Neal in the box. Huge play there. Javi a little more direct that time. Not sure if it was for Farwell or Dos Santos. Ends up bouncing out. The use header skips up high on Murphy who then loses his footing a bit. But it's back for Connor Gibson. You know, in other teams, if Gibson's not replacing Gundelak back there, then that's a, that's that's an open lane for the Terriers to run down on a two-on-one or a three-on-two. But this time you have Gibson there filling that void and allows BC to maintain possession. And back line continues to push forward. Burkhardt who's in on the left wing with Ochoa getting a breather at the moment. Javi O'Neal. Gibson got it through, looking for Boati. Went right through the legs of his defender, but BU circled back on it well. Boati still pushing here and forces BU to just ice it out to the side. Would have been the nutmeg of the year if Boati was able to catch that on the right foot and turn and shoot, but again, the defense for the Terriers inside the 18 has been great. And they continue to play smart. Gundelak tried to play it forward for Dos Santos. Again, answered back. So B used to have a pretty good job on the back line here, Lewis. But one thing we have seen over the last seven, eight, nine minutes is it's been all BC front foot forward. Yeah, and this is where they've gotten their goals is just containing the possession, making sure they find the right reads and finding the right players. And BU hasn't had an answer for it. Farwell trying to get around Roach. Jonathan Murphy with speed through the middle. Burkhardt comes to Chavi on the near side. O'Neal, a little bit of room. You see how much BU worried about the dangerous play of Chavi O'Neal sent three red shirts that direction. As soon as the ball leaves, they all go right back into their positions, but that's the respect they have for O'Neal. Murphy plays it for Farwell. Little bit strong on the touch and has to circle back. That's what BC wants. They want their senior leaders, their leaders to take those chances. Here is Cargill, flips it over for Bowati. Got spun around. Jonathan Murphy comes back in to play it. Murphy goes wide for Bowati. Collects in a decent spot. CJ Williams well up into the play. It switched spots with Gundelak in an earlier sequence and still out there on that right side. A lot of Boston College possession here with 12 minutes to go in a 2-2 game. O'Neal again onto the right foot and it's too strong for Bolotti. But BC gets it right back. Gibson stepped up. Plays it forward, Boati. And it is forced wide and out. So the Eagles will keep the pressure on. Boy, it looked like after Gibson made the great play, but then BU did a good job circling back up. Well, sometimes you play too cautious, right? Sometimes you're waiting for the right pass. You're waiting for the, you're just wait, waiting to pull the trigger and you don't pull the trigger. Burkhardt's got room, plays into the middle. Good answer by Roach. Yeah, Farwell was running in. If he could have gotten there just two seconds sooner, he might have had a chance to put a header on that one in front of the defender. But again, sustained possession for the Eagles. This has been the longest BC push. Sustained push, I should say, all night. When they get it back, they're not afraid to reset, regroup, get everybody in the right position. They go from north to west to east to south. I mean, 
they're not afraid to just go to the player that's open, and that's the part of the system that we've been talking about. Is look, we're not we're not hoping for a goal scorer who get us ten goals, but just the right goal scorer in the right moment. Dos Santos plays it forward. Dos Santos still on it, looking for Boati. It was initially knocked by Della Motter. This is out on their side, and it is a deep BU throw, which will bring in a set of three Terrier subs. Aiden Holmes, Alex Bonington return for BU. And Aiton Rosen back in as well. Cargill right off the throw and gets it back for BC. Cargill pushing forward. Rosen did a nice job to take him off. Sometimes even a sub like that, you wonder if it just kind of changes the tenor of who's out there. BC has to go back through. Musil plays it forward. Nothing called there in the midfield. Under 10 minutes to go here in Newton in a 2-2 game. Farwell room in the middle and tries to go wide for Murphy. Had to hold up. Neil Carlson was there for the Terriers. That's where Murphy's dangerous, just outside the 18 on that side of the field. You want to try to feed him out there so you can rip a shot. So Farwell with his eyes up sees that one, but it's got to be impressive to use defense right now. I mean, the way they've been able to just bend and not break here against the Eagles really showing you something. Awadi comes back for Boston College. Farwell up for now. O'Neal settles well. Back to flex out and sets up the corner kick. Javi O'Neal using Bagnato. Corner kick number six coming up here for Boston College. I like this. Farwell's going to come out, take it, give Chari some, sp some space here on the near side, and Dos Santos moves to the top of the 18. Everybody kind of back and off the goal for BC right now. Farwell sends it deep. It's immediately headed out by BU. Comes right to O'Neill, though, and the Eagles will recollect. Burkhardt sends it in, was trying to get it to C.J. Williams. Carlson answers for the Terriers. Comes to O'Neill. He's got a little bit of room. O'Neill pushes by, sets it up, bounces it through, and it's held by Montali. If that doesn't bounce inside the box, you think Aiden Farwell has a great chance to put a shot on, but BU's defense, again, just disrupting those passing lanes, disrupting those shots. Got to give credit to those defenders in front. That whole sequence was called out even after the initial header. You could see Bob Thompson. Williams has to play it back here to Musial. Bob Thompson was calling out Jack Burkhardt, said move up into that space, and then eventually it came right to him. Almost ended up working out for the Eagles with O'Neal on the left side. BC pushing back. Dos Santos lets it go wide. 6.40 to go in a 2-2 game here in Newton. BU's done a really good job. Even as much time as O'Neal has had possession on this left side, sending two, three red jerseys to him each time. Another one there is answered. That came way too close to our booth for comfort. There's a glass in <laughs> front of us, Eric. And there's an open window. Come on. <laughs> that was that was really well angled. It was coming right here. <laughs> the one one camera show, right? The one. <laughs> I think it's fine that way. What's been interesting about this stretch is remember. As BU, first let's watch push back here. Remember, it was the Terriers who had that level of sustained 
push in the first half that it was really only the last three or four minutes that BU, BC, I should say, kind of turned it back. Well, BC is the one who's had all the possession the last 10, 12, 15 minutes almost. Can BU do the same thing? First time we've been down this end in BU possession in a while. And it's off a free kick for the Terriers. Kevin Torres gives it right back for Bagnano. Great chance here, played into the box, header on! Oh, big save, Murcio! We've talked about how good BU is off of these set pieces tonight. That was excellent. And Musio with his biggest save of the night. And Musio, who hasn't really been tested here in the second half, has to respond here with less than five minutes left and responds he does. That's a huge punch out. It does set up a corner where BU has been good. The fitness for both these teams have been phenomenal. Luke Dunn had the opportunity for BU. Excellent save, Musio. Off the corner kick, the header is wide. They were trying to find Alex Boddington, the sophomore. And BU must retreat. BC on possession, 418 remaining in regulation of this 2-2 game. Dundalak plays it over top. Momentary header by Della Motter, but the Eagles are back on possession. Williams, Bawani too strong on the touch. Throw in for BU. And they're gonna rule there was a violation on the throw with one foot up in the air and that gives possession to BC. Plays it wide. The pressure from BU forced that ball wide and a throw in coming up for the Terriers. Down to 245 left. Cargill comes in. And that's going to be whistled down and stops the clock with 2.25 to go. And the yellow card comes out. Not sure if the yellow was coming either way or it was after there was some pushing and shoving. I'm surprised Cargill's the only one with the yellow there. I mean, the foul is the foul, but then the official's on his way over there and there's a push from the Terrier player. That's when you got to keep this game in control. Yeah, the only thing I can think of was they were... The yellow was coming on Cargill for the foul, and he just ran in the referee to give it to him once the kind of shoving on that far side started to occur. So, 2.25 to go. And BU with a free kick. Neil Carlson. Wonder how much this game is going to open up here in the last 225. Discipline. That's what both coaches are hoping for. Discipline. BU just had a chance and a half. Really outstanding after all that sustained time down the other end for the Eagles. Ball played forward off the foot of Dunn. That was deflected. Right in front. They score! Alex Bonington thought he had the goal. It was deflected in the block. Box a brilliant play, but offside called. 
and you could see it on the split of the defense. That's why Musial was just kind of in shock. He knew that he was beyond the defenders, waiting for the head official to see the assistant official's flag. That's why the whistle came a little bit late. BU was upset, but that looked like a really good call. He was just beyond the defense. It was really close, but you can see that red jersey just behind two white jerseys. Clock had to be reset. 1.56 to go. BU thought it had the winner. It's another great chance, though, for the Terriers in the last two minutes or so. Carlson pushing back. Dos Santos got the right arm out. That's going to be a card. That right arm got right on the shoulder and kind of pulled back. And that was a clear yellow as the cards start to mount here in these late moments. Fourth yellow on the Eagles. Fifth one over on this game. And when you have a good chance to rush out like that, the official's gonna call it, especially in a game like this where emotions are kinda high and you gotta make sure that you're playing smart here. You don't wanna pick up a red card for those that do have a yellow. Ball played deep into the box. Musio on a clean catch. 134 to go, and he goes quickly. Out for Dos Santos. They're trying to get Bonington there, who had some good height at 6-1. Serafino got knocked down. I mean, at this point, you almost got to call everything or nothing. <laughs> it's on every play, there's a little something. Even balls you think are going out are going to get a whistle. I, I think they were out. <laughs> a lot of chaos on the far side of the pitch with 62 seconds remaining tonight. How do you find yourselves, find some patience in the midst of all the chaos and late stages in a rivalry match that's 2-2. Two -two. That's a push from behind and it stops the clock. And another yellow is coming out. Aiden Holmes for BU. To me, all these have been fair. I mean, I know I know it's getting physical, but there's a lot of not just little touches, but kind of full extensions here both ways. Daniel Pop really has not had a choice but to call these. Yeah, you have to. You have to try to keep this game under control. And now a good chance here for the Eagles. Nothing with flagrant, but... Yeah, for arms both, extended, for both teams, it's, it's borderline, right? You don't you don't want it to be too nasty, too crazy, but you also have to call contact. And that's what, what the head official is doing here, is making sure that anything that seems dangerous or maybe illegal, you stay on the safe side of that, and then you allow the boys to play when they need to play. 44 seconds remaining in a free kick for Boston College. Farwell, quick touch. Dos Santos gives it back to Farwell. Got a chance. In for Dos Santos, deflected out. Quarter kick coming up, BC. Beautiful, well designed. Yeah, that's how you do it. You got to set it up, give and go. You're running out of time. You got to keep it moving. Under 30 seconds to go. Dos Santos. Goes wide. Burkhart came off his foot. Gibson gives it back to him. 10 seconds to go. Dos Santos throws it on. Header try. Williams got that down. Oh, and Montali came in and falls on it. And that's how it ends. Oh, a brilliant chance late. CJ Williams will be thinking.